So let's go through an example of how to build a chain model. Notice that I already happen to have a partition node that I've added to the stream. So the partition node again is just going to split my data into a training and a testing data set so that I end up building my model on the test training data set but then I test it on the testing data set. Let's edit the type node so you can see what was done there. Notice that my field ID, the role is set to none because I'm not going to include it in the model. Then I'm going to end up using all of these fields as predictors for my model. The field status is what I'm going to be predicting, so it has its role set to target, and then you see the other predictors as well. Notice that the field partition is, has its role set to partition. I'll click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the modeling palette, and I'm going to bring the chain modeling node onto the canvas. Notice that the chain modeling node automatically changes its name to whatever the target is. In this case, it's the field status. Let's edit the chain modeling node. So here, notice that I'm just using the predefined roles based off the type node so that I know now what uh, the target is going to be and what my predictors are as well, as well as any fields that I'm excluding. So let's go over to the Build Options tab. So here the first thing that you need to do is you have to specify what your objective is. The, the objective here is that we're going to end up building a new model, but we could continue training an existing model if that was what we wanted to do. In terms of our main objective, we're going to end up building a single tree model. Now we're just going to generate the model, meaning that it's going to be created automatically for us by Modeler. We could also launch an interactive session, in which case we can tell Modeler which predictors we wanted to use when. So if we had some kind of theory uh, that we wanted to use, or maybe some business rules that we wanted to use for building our model, we can certainly use that option. Some other options that you see here as well, you have this boosting option. What that does is it ends up building multiple models for you. It ends up building the first model in the typical way. But then what's going to happen is that a second model was built so that it focuses on the records that were misclassified by the first model. And then a third model would be built so that it focuses on those records that were misclassified by the second model and so forth. Then those models end up being combined. The uh, enhanced model stability option or bagging, what that does is it ends up creating multiple models and then it combines them so that you end up having more reliable predictions. You also have the option to create models for very large data sets, but that requires a server. And basically what that does is it ends up dividing the data into smaller data blocks and then it builds a model for each block and then it ends up combining everything. Like I said, in our case, we're going to end up building a single tree model, which is a default. Let's go over to the basics tab. Here you have to specify what algorithm you want to use. The default is that we're going to use Chade, and that's what we're going to use here. And then you also could specify you could also specify that you could use exhaustive Chade, which basically is another version of Chade that ends up ex examining more splits in the data. You can then also specify what the maximum tree depth is going to be. The default is that your tree is going to go down five levels. You could also specify that you want it to go either more or less than that. For example, if you happen to have a lot of predictors, you might end up increasing the uh, tree depth to something else. Uh, also, if you have very large data files. If you happen to have smaller data files, maybe you might want to decrease the number of levels that your tree can grow. So that way you're not really end up having, you don't end up having predictions for a very small number of cases. It ends up then, uh, by having your trees grow uh, a smaller amount, it ends up reducing the likelihood that you end up capitalizing on chance. Let's click on stopping rules. This tells Modeler when to stop building your tree. So you could end up, you could stop building your tree either because you've run out of predictors or there are no longer any predictors that are deemed important. You also might stop building the, a tree because you've reached the maximum number of levels that you can let the tree grow. Or a tree can also stop uh, its building process because you don't have enough records in either a parent or a child branch. And the default is set based on percentages, but you could also use absolute values as well. Now, this is one of those options that I sometimes change. Uh, you know, I may uh, end up changing the number of the percentages here to something a little higher because I may not necessarily want to end up building a branch when I only have 1% of records there. I might want to have a, a higher percentage. I'm going to click on the cost tab. Now, 
These misclassification costs, what they do is they allow you to specify that maybe you don't want to make certain errors when you end up building your models. So let me give you an example. Notice that we happen to have the errors in the diagonals. We have a current customer, but we predicted that they churned. That would be an error. Or we have a churned customer, but we predicted that they are current customers. That would be an error as well. Notice that they both have a value of 1, meaning that they were given equal weight. Now, there are some situations where you don't want to give equal weight to your errors. For example, let's say we're talking about uh, a medical situation and you end up telling a, a client that they have cancer when in reality they don't. Now, that's a grave error. okay? But a worse error is to tell somebody that they're fine when in reality they do have cancer. That would be an error we really would not want to make. So in that case, we might end up specifying that the misclassification cost might be a value of 2 or maybe a 2.1, so that we're 2.1 times less likely to make that error at the cost of making the other error. Okay, So you're not going to get something for nothing. You're going to make it less likely to make a particular type of error at the cost of making the other error more often. Okay, So sometimes you may want to specify this information. I'm going to click on the Ensembles tab. These are ways in which you can end up combining uh, models when you end up building more than one model. Remember I mentioned the uh, bagging and the boosting option and the server option as well. This is where you end up controlling exactly how many of the models you end up building. The default, for example, is set to 10 for both, both boosting and bagging. And then how you end up combining those models as well when you end up creating multiple versions of models. And if we go over to the Advanced tab, you can see some other options as well. Uh, because this is the chi-square test that the Chade model is running on, it's using the 0.05 significance level for to determine where categories end up being split and also when categories are merged. Okay, there's also uh, yeah, there's also the option to specify which chi-square test you want to run. You want to run the Pearson chi-square statistic or the likelihood ratio or how many iterations you're going to run, or the amount of change that's required so that you end up running another iteration and so forth. So these are where you, this is where you end up specifying some of those options. Let's click on the Model Options uh, tab up at the top. Here we're going to end up building a model where we're going to see predictor importance. That way we'll be able to see which predictors were the most important in the model. And if we also happen to have models where we have flag targets, we could also end up creating propensity scores. And propensity scores basically will tell you the likelihood of a particular outcome occurring. So we'll, uh, we'll click on Run, and we're just going to run our model here on the defaults. We ran our model. Notice that we have our generated model that just appeared here. I'm just going to double click on it so we can edit the generated model. And so this is what our output looks like. Right now we're in the model tab. Notice that on the right hand side we can see which predictors were the most important. Notice that the field Premier was the most important predictor followed by total items which was one of the fields that we created and then you can see the other fields as well. Now notice that not all of the fields were used because What's nice about decision tree models is that they only end up using those predictors that are necessary. So you may have, for example, 50 predictors. It might only end up using 10 that were deemed important. Now, in terms of what these bar means, these bars are basically referring to the relative importance of each one of these predictors. So if you add up all of these bars, they're going to add up to a total value of 1. So again, it's telling you relative importance. So in this case, the most important predictor really is Premier followed by uh, total items and so forth. You can see that stereo discount was an important predictor, but compared to the others, it wasn't quite as important. Now over on the left-hand side, we can see what the model predictions looks like. So we can click on any one of these different uh, numbers and they end up basically showing you the information at a particular level. I can click on the number one, number two, it expands that information and so forth. I'm just going to click on the all button and that ends up showing me my whole tree. And then I'm also going to click on the percent sign and then it ends up giving me uh, numbers, uh, the uh, number of um, people predicted in a particular category and those comp the confidence in those predictions as well. 
So I just expanded the size of my output and this is what it's telling me. So it's telling me that if I ended up predicting if somebody was uh, not a premier customer and they had been a customer with us less than or equal to three years and their estimated revenue was less than or equal to about four million and they happened to be uh, international customers we're predicting that they churned and that rule applied to 25 people and we were accurate 100 percent of the time whereas if we were dealing with a non-premier customer and they had been a customer with us uh, for three years or less and their estimated revenue was less than or equal to about four million but they happen to be national customers instead we're also predicting that they're going to churn that rule applied to 47 people but we were only accurate about 66 percent of the time so when you met all those conditions it ends up being important whether we happen to have an international or national customer even though what the prediction ends up being the same the accuracy of our prediction is much higher when we happen to have international customers than national customers and so forth so these thick lines are telling you when a prediction has been made the first number is referring to the number of cases that that prediction applies and then the next value that you see there is the confidence in those predictions now we can also see this information in a different way for example we can click on the viewer tab and here we can see really what ends up being more of our traditional way of looking at a tree and I'm just going to uh, modify this a little bit here I'm modifying the output this is the root of the tree again it's showing us the distribution that we happen to have for our outcome field I'm going to click on the plus sign to expand it a little bit and let me just modify this tree again a little bit so that it becomes a little easier to see okay so you see that the most important predictor was the field premier if you happen to be a premier customer notice that we ended up predicting that you are going to be a current customer that rule applied to 1176 people and we were accurate 945 times or about 80 percent of the time if you happen to be a non-premier customer a regular customer that rule applied to 1280 people and we ended up being accurate uh, 858 times or about 67 percent of the time we can then expand this and look at the next level and I'm just going to minimize some of these other options here so that becomes a little easier to see okay we can see that for the non-premier customers the next most important variable was years as a customer so if you happen to be less than or equal to three years as a customer we're predicting that you're going to be a current customer from three to four we're predicting that you're going to be a current customer or more than four we're predicting that you're churning whereas for the premier customers if I expand this option we can see that for the premier customers notice that the next most important variable was number total number of items purchased and then you can see what the breakdown ends up being there okay so again this is the way you can then start to expand and understand what the rules are telling you so again you can end up seeing your decision tree model either this way through the view tab or through the model tab whichever way ends up being easier now let's close out of this window and the last thing we want to do is we want to take a look at those model predictions so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to connect the generated model over to a table and I'm just going to run this table if I scroll over to the uh, end of the file here notice that this first customer we're predicting that they're going to churn the confidence in that prediction is about uh, 55 percent 
Notice the second customer. We're predicting that they're going to churn as well, but the confidence in that prediction is 97%. So you end up getting two new fields when you end up running a model like this. This field R status is telling you the prediction. The field RC status is telling you the confidence in that prediction. And that confidence value is coming from whatever rule ended up applying to that particular case. Also notice that we end up having predictions for not just the training data set, but also for the testing data set as well. And again, the model was built on the training data set, but it ends up giving you predictions for both training and the testing data set. So that's an example of how you can end up building a model. In this case, we ended up building a shade model. And in the next lesson, we can start to look at how to analyze these results and evaluate these results.